would say that Aura might have to go back to their roots. But here's a comment here, Kevin. From the up and coming, one of the best jungler in Indonesia, the current van in EVOS is much more challenging. Actually, in game one, BTR faces EVOS just now. We almost lost. Obviously, this is referencing to the first series that they played. But it's going to be a Nana. This is a bold one. This is a good one for neutral objectives, though. Yep. I mean, I was expecting the Nana to show up a bit more, a bit earlier in the league so far, but hey, it's a good pick. But everyone corralling around the box here, right? Everyone trying to fight together. The Molina is going to be so annoying, but you have to keep in mind now that Nano Passive no longer gives you movement speed. So it is a lot more vulnerable in the lane, and Warlord needs to be a bit more careful with his positioning, even though the Passive is still available. I don't really know what to go for here or for Aura Fire. Probably something that can split push, like nonetheless a Pakiro or Benedetta. Oh! Ooh, the signature the choke comeback. comes out! He's inspired, man! He's seen Bruce Gold! Oh my god, against this team, I did not expect it! I did ask him in the back, I was with Arashi and the X-Borg too. What? Arashi, there... It's a Nana, it's a Barat, it's a Minotaur and a Herod! This is... Oh, oh man! And oh. a Fanny for Van! Oh, we've... Okay, what I a just, banger! I just broke my fast, this is way too spicy! Oh, but... What? We have BLI this season 13! Will it be the dragons or the tigers? The dragons with a signature world level Cho. Unfortunately, we won't see him on the world champion skin, but it's close enough. The KOF skin. Also for the Fanny. My goodness. Van. We were just talking about assassin picks for Van. He's not really comfortable on it, Arashi, but it does seem like Van wants to prove everybody wrong. We were thinking he was going to go for something utility based, trying to secure those retributions, but he's trying to flex his skills right here. Going with the lethal ignition as well. Aura. They gotta be a, be a bit more careful right here, especially with the more vulnerable laners that they have. But that mid lane is definitely a power side for Aura that they can take advantage of. And to be fair, the only real threat for Van is that Chow. And looking at this, it looks like Gugun will take the first Lethal Wonder with the Retribution. Showing again the great retreat that Gugun has been showing oh. so far, but there you go, that's a passive. You can see, it's, he's moving a lot slower. No longer is he just scuttling away out of sight. So that can very easily be punished the longer the game goes when you're positioning away from your turrets. It's really hard to lane against Vexana. Even though she got nerfed, I believe the projectile, the first kill, you know, speed is lower to about 10%. That's a really good nerf, I guess. But it's still one of the best mages in terms of like, just laning phase, just, you know, chunking away all the HP. And while Van, no one saw that, don't worry. Ooh, a little cable maneuvers there, but it's still Gugun who is ahead, who has invaded the enemy jungle too. So Gugun's doing a good job uh, using this Bakshia to try to limit the maneuvers and the farming from the Fanny. Fortunately for Van, no real deep invades have come from the side of Aura just yet. And speaking of uh, ambush, by the way, Kabuki with the Quantum Charge, uh, I believe Mirko prefers this combination over the Breeze Smite. Yes. Good combination of utility and sustain in the lane. Going up against a Harriet, that's definitely going to help out with the, uh, the harassment. But here we go, first neutral object. What has transpired One in our absence? And Turtle. So Aura got the Turtle and Makes first sense. blood. I wish we could have seen how yeah. they did it, because we were speculating. Already a step ahead for Aura. And look at their emblems, man. Again, Yaoi is intending to be all across the map. Agility, Wilderness Blessing. The longer the game goes, the more he's gonna be, he's gonna be trying to be annoying. And he has skill on the Vexana. He's trying to roam Ooh. around too, but there you go. Whoa! Really quicker, what a terrifying now. Van, very low. There's an Eternal Guard as well there from Yeheskiel. He's gotta play it real, real safe. Yeah, speaking of playing real safe though, Fildora as a Parati XP against a uh, export, like this is a match made, you know, it's a nightmarish matchup for him. He's gonna get chunked up real bad, especially before objective fights. And like, what are your job is to kind of survey the map and see what's, uh, what, uh, what the options are available. It's gonna be hard for him to even stay alive. Good poke onto Van Strong. Pops in that regen. Yeah, he's looking for an initiation, a pickoff perhaps right now. Only 1,000 gold in Aura, but they're already pressuring over on this purple buff. Too good. Doesn't want to overcommit. No shield unity. He might be able to look for an angle, but he decides it's a bit too risky and he backs off, giving Van another purple buff to play with. Extending um, his life a bit longer here with yet another buff. We'll see what he can do with it though. He went for a dive towards the mid laner, but you're, sure, you're seeing again why the Vexana is so good. If he played that wrong and Yeskio just lands the Eternal Guard on top of the Terrifying, 
I thought we, we end, man. Under a turret, that's a long time to be crowd controlled. I'm sure, this is an assassin too. I'm sure you better play with me while Haran is gonna do his job. Gonna chunk up all the. Oh, Yaoi! Quicker over with the dragon. That's the first kill to Yaoi in this game, Van. Not able Ooh. to out retry Gugun as Gugun just takes it away from him right now. But Van already used the retribution, so they might be looking for some more even in the bottom side of the map. Kabuki actually doing a good job against Super Red, taking him low. And oh there's already no. a little bit more of a backup here from Yaoi, just zoning him away, giving Kabuki free space to hit. All right, Ooh. what? In the enemy jungle, enemy territory, 1v3 gets taken out. A glimpse of brilliance of Yaoi right away, just securing the objectives for Aura Fire. And, you know, right away pressuring Super Red on towards the bottom lane, getting a bit of a each, um gold from the plating for Kabuki. And how Kabuki is playing the lane though, just impunity standing in front of Super Red, knowing that when it comes to just basic attack DPS, he wins it out. But Super Red with the Starlium here, now it's going to be just that much different. Aura might have to be a bit more careful. Wow. The most unreal stat. Yep. I mean, we saw it. Like, the four-man knock-up towards the whole Onyx team is just absolutely ridiculous. And he can pick out the perfect target in CW. Like, that was probably one of the craziest pick off I've ever seen. And while he's trying to do so, again, again, Jeet Kune Do away the dragon into the Eternal Guard. And we expected the Minion's Fury to counter the dive. But what can you do when you're chain CC'd like that? Around in the mid lane, clearing the waves out away. Veldora's getting melted down by Aran. Look at Veldora's HP. And even in the bottom lane, Yaoi, again, Jeet Kune Do over the Warlord. Shield Unity over to Super Red. Zaman Force defensively with a pair Purify as well. Not a turret should be taken down. Veldora's getting chumped as well right now as Yaoi zones them away. Evos are still able to clear out the waves, but man, Aura are oppressive. How fun is it to play with Yaoi, man? Like, he's just feeding him kills. So far, he's 2 0 1. All three kills are, you know, created by him. Just flickers up. He might be looking for another angle. Especially with the total coming up, if they can get another pick up, it's gonna be great. And for Evos, they're struggling right now because Van Strong for now is the main frontliner and he's hard controlled, which Aura has a lot of. It's gonna be so difficult for him to try and heal for his team. Well, let's see oh. right now. Oh, chain CC! And it's gonna be Van who wins it out right there. No CC to help Aura. Gugun gets brought back to the team. Aran's gonna be targeted down and yes, Gil Flicker is out to safety, but no! Van finds the cut through Yaoi! Jikun Do, quicker combo, bringing Van back for Kukun Ooh. to slay. Kabuki with a blazing duet now onto Warlord, who's forced to run away and has the passive, but now gets chased down by Yaoi. One more hit should do it. Ooh, Warlord's low. Missed. Yaoi's looking for the play, but he missed it earlier to shut Poo to get away, but Veldora eats him up, and it's an overall great trade for Evo's glory. For sure, but the gold lead is still towards Aura. There's still a lot of hurdle to climb for Evo's glory, but a win is a win nonetheless. Great move from Evo is to try and find a way to really win that fight out by just rushing, forcing Aura to kind of make a quick call in the middle of everything without getting the proper setup. Even though, if you think about it, Veldora on the EXP lane, bullied by the X Borg, and Van Strong is bullied by all the crowd control. The frontline possibility for Evos is just made very difficult by Aura. So that's how they're really trying to bully Evos away from the objectives. But if Evos get there first, then that's where they can kind of dictate what happens. Yeah. What a play, though, from Veldora. Flicker and Tetonas will come. Yep. I've never seen that, actually. Those combo that was used quite a lot last week. Okay, interesting. But yeah, Veldora, the longer the game goes, I think it favors Aura much more, especially Van. This, 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 we're talking about Assassin here. Like, it's going to fall off for sure in the late game. And there's a lot of room to play with for Aura. A lot of. Creativity, I guess, like in a way on how you can approach the team fight. But yeah, again, fan, no one saw that. The no MPL worries. pressure, man. You miss one cable and you hear you heard the fans. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. crazy already. <laughs> it's gotta be quite demoralizing for sure. Evo is now just look at how safe they're playing. They're sending two members to escort Super Red. Oh no. Fans in the area. Is he gonna No. He's way not gonna crowded, walk yeah. into it. Now the Lord is up. And Aura is still on the other side of the map, though. Evos makes the first move. He has killed the Terraform. Oh, the Terraform! There you go! Yeah, play Van! 
on the assassin, but gets assassinated instead. Yaoi oh. eaten up right now with a Minus Fury. Veldora flickering. No, he doesn't get into the wall. Yaoi's able to flicker out and jump poo. Aran very deep in enemy territory. Brings him back very low. Aran hiding back. Flickers out. Super Red pops into some Mark Force, but he's not able to find the hit to reset his second skill. And that means it's a free lord over to the dragons without the red tree being used up. Gugun wants to go for the enemy purple buff. Once again, Gugun's showing class in the objective department, but I don't really get it. Why would you go for Chao with Shunpo available, with Jit Kundo available, and also Flicker available? He's gonna get away quite fine. And he did. Man, that was just so difficult. Van was that was a bold move from Van. I get that he has the Malefic War right now and the Hepatitis. He has burst damage, but against a Vexana, this is exactly what makes her so dangerous. Deathly Grasp into Eternal Guard is basically a guaranteed knock-up hit. The Eternal Guard is definitely gonna land if you land the Deathly Grasp first. So unless Van dodges that, there's just no way. And just like that, Aura takes momentum, takes the turrets as well, and they're still looking for more as Van. Oh, Van on the S kill. Oh no, Van! Van gets locked up again! Kabuki finds the kill! Yeah, Hes kill survives! And it is again a disaster for Evo's glory! Van says hi, Yaoi says what's up, bro? You're gonna get kicked! And another kill, courtesy of Yaoi. I mean, Man. We we're talking about, oh, he let Van play, but it looks like the draft of Aura is meant specifically to really deny any real chance of pickoffs coming from him. The peel towards the back line is just insane right now. Sure, right now 5k gold lead entering the 11th minute or 12th minute of the game for Aura versus Evos Glory. Kill department 3 for Aura. It's looking pretty bleak, I gotta say, for Evos, especially when they have a much more early game composition rather than Aura. And what? audience prediction also says 60 to 40, Rashi. 60 to for Aura, I think that's fair. Evos can still come back right here by all means. It's not, it's a 5k gold lead, but look at this. Aran, of all people, getting engaged on. Desperate Detonus welcome onto Aran. They tried. They get the Fulaga oh. armor. Gugun's going oh. in. Eternal Guard. Super Red, is he going to be dead here? Mm. Oh my goodness. He gets out just barely. But man, every attempt that Evos Glory are trying right now is just not working. Man, if Yeskil landed the curse plant yeah. on top of the Eternal Guard, that was done. He was playing it a bit conservatively, which is fine, right? Aura can just cruise right here. That was a play initiated by Evos, and yet they were the ones who almost lost a member. Aura is just content playing for objectives, waiting for the next fight where, can, where they can once again punish Evos for this composition with a very squishy frontline that's behind on items. They're going to be so squishy for everyone on the side of Aura to take out. Just like Mirko said, it's desperation. Like, the targets are not there. The, the prime targets are not in the vicinity. You have to take what's available. And it's Aran, you have to take the chances, even though it didn't really translate to kills. At least right now, Aran knows that the pressure is there. He's not going to be as aggressive as before. And I think that's, you know, it's not really a W, but it is something. Well, shutting Aran down is definitely a huge plus if they can do so. But in this late stage in the game, Targeting him when the objective is almost up, where he has the Piraga armor as well. It just shouldn't work, but like I said, there's not a lot of options left for Evos right here. Especially with Aran just out Again. there, right in their faces! Alright, let's see if this, if this works out now. Eternal Guard on the three, Piraga armor. They got a Piraga <laughs> armor. Wow. The heal. Wow. It's desperate and it did not work. Again, Second Lord secured for Aura. Just the pseudo pressure that Aran puts, man. Like. Every time he's in the front line, you can't really close up. It, it, whether you're Feldora, whether you're Van Strong, the two frontliners are not frontlining. You know, the crowd control coming in from Yeheskyo on the Vexana isn't really all that wide in AoE. It's just one small circle. But you saw right there, multiple members just keep getting hit by it. And I dare say that's because Yaoi has been so dangerous that everyone from EVOs don't feel safe just being too far apart from their teammates. At, le at least far enough for for Yaoi to just find an opening. So that's how Aura is just forcing Evos to play a certain way. And once they do, they have the solutions ready for it. So this is a layered strategy, a layered approach coming from Aura. And look at the wave management, man. Wow. It's almost perfect. Yeah. They have now the Lord on their side too. They can use it to their advantage. But looks like Evos will try to make a quick work of this Lord. Can they do it?
Still gonna charge in despite them trying to chunk it down. Mid lane as well, dealt with pretty well by Evo's Wow. Fly. Not able to crack the base open with the first or the second Lord Pather right now. Kabuki's doing a good job though right now with the BMI. Pops in, Eternal of Guard, knocking Veldora off, and that's gonna be a lockdown actually. Aran jumping in as well with the last insanity onto Veldora. He might be able to find that, and my goodness, he just takes him out. That's a free turret too as Aran just flickers out to safety, buys the immortality now. Lord number two gets them the first base turret, and look at that turret up top. It's very low. Vance looking for a trade. He should be able to get it, but at what cost? Aura are not stopping the siege. Yaoi has been quiet for the last few minutes. He looks to, to find something here. Let's see. Oh, he has the flicker oh. as well. Oh, man, that BMI up top. Did you guys see that? Kabuki just pops into Battle Mirror Image to get the last few hits onto that base turret, and it was low enough to get taken down by just Dexter. <laughs> Man, he has skill though, get it taken out right there. Definitely not ideal for Aura, but at an 8k gold advantage, they're just running with the plan, right? They're still staying in the jungle. They don't care if their jungle is up. They're, oh, it's about wow. denying Aura, but look at Van. No purple buff. Didn't get it. Gugun again, showing his class. He's handsome. <laughs> okay. Honestly, his I, I think they could have gone for a little bit more there for Aura, even though it's 4v5, they have around, they have the pull. Actually put like four or three people there. Could have been something, but they choose to go for the discipline route, and I think that's kind of a good thing too. I think especially without Yeheskill and the Vexana, he is right now a huge bulk of their pickoff potential and their damage. I'm wondering, once we see the items, is he going for the fleeting time? Because when you're this ahead, generally what you want to do is wait for the first target to appear, use everything, delete him, and then rinse and repeat. And just like that, usually the Eternal Guard is on cooldown for only about 20 seconds. That is massive. For sure, man. Just the zoning. It's not just Iran, but Yeskiel. Like everyone, Kabuki even. You can play like Skylar. Quite aggressively using the BMI to chunk up all of the frontliners of Evos. And there's nothing Evos can do about that. They have to chunk the free of the armor first to make something. Oh, Yaoi, look at that conceal. Oh my god, they beat it out. That's just welcome for nothing. Oh, good burst damage onto the back. But Yeheskiel still was able to walk out. Man, just with the conceal, they bait out the death and his welcome, and it's a free lord again to Aura. That's the Yaoi pressure we've been talking about. And if you're looking at the items right here, in the mid lane at least, decent amount of items, Divine Glaive even completed for Warlord. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. Only gets the kick out of Veldora earlier. Veldora with a flicker out right now. Last Insanity onto Van Strong as Van tries to deal with Kabuki, but he's not going to be able to do so. Immortality, Van Strong popped down. Super Red with his on force right now, but Gugu and Gugu just soak it in and run back to safety. Has Immortality, Kabuki now with Blazing Duet gets bursted down. Oh, Kabuki! Ooh. Loses the Immortality now as Aran tries to back him up. That's a Wind of Nature pop, but Super Red deals magic damage and takes him down. Gugu running Van Whoa. down, goes in for Shield Unity. Van should still have the cables. RGM popped in that shield. They don't have Eldora, they don't have Van Strong. Three members against four. Van going back and forth. Super Red now with Zaman's Force, but now, oh, the Purify gets him out of safety, but he's already out of the Red? Zaman's Force. He won't be able to cut himself out of this one. And now the base is wide open, even though Van tries to go for the assassination. Only the base is what is available to be assassinated. Aura takes game one. They strike first quite con convincingly at that, just using Yaoi to perfection in the early game and using the zoning potential from Yeheskill